Good morning to those of you who've just joined us. Thank you for joining us. Um, and apologies to everyone who has been hearing me saying good morning several times. Uh, but thanks for joining us today. We'll be kicking off at 9.30 sharp. So we'll just give it another couple of minutes as people are joining in. Right. Good morning again, everyone. Welcome to our session this morning on Small Business Be Grant Ready. Thank you for joining us. My name is Liesl Snyman. I'm the Strategic Project Funding Officer from the Tablelands Regional Council. And this um, webinar is brought to you as a partnership between Cassowary Coast Council and TRC. Um, and it is part of the Regional Skills Investment Strategy Project, which is supported and funded by the Queensland Government. So thank you for that. Before we begin, um, there's a couple of things that I'll just share. So we will have a Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. Um, you will find a button on your screen somewhere that says Q&A where you can type your question and we will get to that at the end. So type it in as we go along. Um, I would also like to welcome my colleagues on the call. So I have Christy Whitehead who is from TRC. Um, Callum Kippen, also from TRC, will be joining us, and Kira Clark from um, the Castlewood Coast Council is joining us as well. So they will be moderating the questions in the background, and will also be helping out with some of the answers if there's anything that stumps me at the end. I'm going to launch a quick poll. So the beauty of technology is that we've, we can do all these fun things. Um, so just a quick poll, you'll see it come up on your screen and it's just asking you to let me know where you're dialing in from today. Are you dialing in from Castle Coast, Tablelands or somewhere else? So it'd be great if you could do that. Um, while you're doing that, I'll also let you know that we are recording this session. So we will make this available for anyone who wants to have a look at it again or if there's anything that um, you missed or for those people who weren't able to join us today so that they can also have a look. Um, so the, it looks like the majority of our um, people joining us today are from TRC so far. Um, one person from Cassery and one person from outside of our region. So thank you again for joining us. I'll leave that up for another little bit as people are joining us. Um, so, uh, something else that I wanted to mention is, um, yes, sorry, I did mention the Q&A section, so that should be it. And there we go, another couple of people have joined us from Cassowary Coast, so thank you very much for that. I'm going to end that poll and we'll get stuck into it. So, here's our agenda for today. We've done a bit of a welcome. Um, we're going to look at grant funding today, the why, what, where and how. Um, we're also going to have a quick look at letters of support and how that fits into the grant funding landscape. We're going to do a case study, which is the Small Business Adaption Grant. Um, and the, we will actually do the Q&A before we get into the case study, so that if anyone's not interested in that grant, they can stay for the Q&A and they might not have to stay for the adaption grant. Um, so that'll be up to you, but I'll make you aware of that again as we go along. So the reason that we're here um, in the current situation is um, the Small Business Adaption Grant and other grants like it um, have been massively oversubscribed in recent times. Um, the Small Business Adaption Grant had 12,000 applications received in just four days. Um, the Curita concessional loans that have been made available as a part of the COVID response um, of up to $250,000 for businesses was over, also oversubscribed. Um, and the key message to local chambers and businesses from Shannon Fentiman, who's our Minister for Employment and Small Business and Minister for Training this week, is to be grant ready. Because when grant programs are announced, it's important that you are ready to apply. So why would you look at applying for a grant? Well, at the moment, there's a lot of funding available for COVID-19 support, obviously, that helps businesses um, to recover during this process. It could also help you to achieve your goals in your business and it can bring investment or projects forward because you might not have the funding available, but if you do get funding from another source, that will mean that you can bring those forward and get cracking in your business. It's also important to look at the grant funding from a funder's perspective. So why would an organisation make funding available? 
Well, they also have objectives, policies and outcomes for their organisation that they want to achieve. So it's important to think about how your project will achieve their aims when you're answering their questions. For you, obviously, the funding is um, important so that you can achieve your goals, but for them, they have goals to achieve and it's important to think about that. Where do you find out about grants? Well, if you subscribe to the TRC newsletters, and I'm sure this is the same for Cassowary, um, we regularly update all of our community about grant funding as it becomes available. You can also have a look at subscription websites. There are websites like Indigo Gold and Grants Guru that send out regular emails um, with grants as they become available. Regional Development Australia also has a list of all the grants that are open and tenders that are available for our region. So if you go to Regional Development Australia, FNQ and Torres Strait, you will see all of the grants that are available for our region. There's also the Queensland Government site, grants.services.qld.gov.au, um, where you can type in the type of business you are and the type of grants that you're looking for, and it will give you a list of everything that's available at the moment. Federal Government also has business.gov.au and grants.gov.au, where you can have a look at those. So what might you have a look at funding with grants? Sometimes you can look at capital projects like equipment upgrades. You can also look at events, advice or mentoring, and sometimes grants are cash and sometimes non-cash. For example, you could apply for some of the grants that are available at the moment for mentoring, which doesn't necessarily involve you getting the cash and then paying someone. Um, if you are successful with some of those grants, you just get the mentoring service without any cash actually exchanging hands. And then how do you go about? Well, your project must be shovel ready. And what we mean by that is that you have to have thought about your project and what you want to achieve by it. This is especially important for capital projects um, where you have to think about some of the, the detail that's gonna be needed for an application. So you need to plan and think about what you need. You need to start getting quotes of what you will need to be funded so that you know the amounts that you are gonna need. If it is a capital project, you need to start speaking to your local council about planning and building approval if that's required for your project. It's important to think about the project and that the project should fit the grant, not the other way around. It's very interesting, and this happens in, um, in every organisation, including Tablelands Regional Council, that when a grant gets announced, you, the, your natural instinct is to start scrabbling around and trying to see, well, what project can we make fit into the grant criteria? But if you go back to the second point that I raised there about what do you need, that's really the important point to think about. The project should be what you need in your business, and then you should look for a grant that actually fits that and how you make that fit. You can also look at previously funded grants to get ideas for what sort of projects could be, um, could attract funding. Once you find a grant that you want to apply for, read the guidelines twice. This is very important. When you, when you read the second time, you can start looking at um, highlighting some things or making notes. Some of the things to think about are, is the grant an entitlement grant? In other words, is it first come, first serve? Or is it only meritorious? So there is an um, assessment process involved. Have a look at what organisations will be eligible and does your organisation fit into that criteria? Have a look at what expenditure will be eligible and how that will fit in with the project that you want to have a look at. Read through the guidelines and make sure that they, whether they mention anything about match funding or co-contribution requirements. And if there is a requirement for co-contribution, is it cash or can it also be in-kind? In-kind is, a, pro, is a, um, a term that is used for your own time and resources that you are putting into a, a grant or a project that isn't necessarily able to be um, defined in terms of cash that you're putting in. 
So this can be very important when you have projects where you will be put doing a lot of the work yourself um, or whether you have your staff contributing or um, other volunteers that might come into it as well. When you're looking at grants for other organisations, not necessarily business, but for sporting groups or other community organisations, that can be very important to highlight what time you and your committee and organisation will actually be putting into the grant. Then have a look at the application process. What's going to be required? Is it an online form? And how will you actually complete that? Then make sure that you read the guidelines again. I can't highlight this enough. The guidelines from round to round between different grants can change. Um, and we've actually, when, when we get to the case study, I'll demonstrate that to you because the guidelines for the Small Business Adaption Grant have had some small changes already. So make sure that you have, you read them again um, and that you make sure that you are actually um, across all of the requirements. And then many times the application form will actually be attached as a, as a PDF or as a Word document, even if it is an online form. Read through the application form so you can have a look at what you are gonna need, what sort of information you need to actually complete it. Then when you start filling in the form, look at how you address the criteria. It's very important to set the scene when you are answering a grant application. Remember that the assessor who is looking at your application does not know anything about your application or about your business. Try to, re to write your application as if you're explaining to someone from scratch what your business is all about and let your passion shine through. When you think about the language that you use, make sure that you use a formal sort of business language and look at the words that they use in their guidelines and use some of their words. For example, if the guidelines say that the objectives is to um, help on the recovery for COVID, then make sure that you address how your um, application will help the recovery for COVID or whatever it might be. It's, um, I, I've heard from many assessors in the grant field and when they see their own language from the guidelines used in the, in the application, they actually know that you have read the guidelines and, they make, they, and that gives them another tick towards the application. Sometimes the question can also include clues, clues for you to use. For example, they will say, you know, answer question one, your response may include blah, blah, blah. So that will give you some, some guides as to what they're actually trying to see in your application response. So that's a, a handy thing to have a look at. Remember that percentages are your friends. If you have a small business, um, sometimes using the raw data, for example, your turnover has changed from, I don't know, $100,000 to $90,000. Um, you know, it might not sound like a big change, but if you start using percentages, it's changed by 10% or by 20 or by 30 or whatever the case may be, or you expect that you are going to grow your turnover by 20 or 30 or whatever percent, um, that, can be, that can be a powerful tool to use in your application. Make sure that you address the need versus the want. This is a very important point, um, and I've touched on it before as well. It's important to demonstrate that what the project that you are wanting to fund is not just something that you want or that you would like to have, but it's important to address how the need is demonstrated in your business or in your community. Make sure that you have available any of the evidence or um, that you need to address the criteria. Um, that can be done via attachments or via your criteria that you are actually answering. Here are some tips and tricks for answering your questions. If you have any questions when you're applying for the grant or you're not quite sure what they mean by anything, feel free to contact the funding body. There is normally an email address or a telephone number in any of the guidelines and they put those in there for a reason. They, they receive um, inquiries about their funds all the time and they will welcome any questions from you. If you do get to talk to them, ask what sort of projects they are seeking. Ask what they don't want and what sort of projects did not get funded in the last round. That will give you a good idea 
of whether your project fits with what they are saying. They oftentimes they won't address specifically whether your project will be eligible because um, they will feel that they will be disadvantaging some of the other um, applicants if they answer your question and not everyone's question. But if you ask it in this sort of way, what sort of projects they're seeking, what they don't want and what did not get funded in the last round, that will give you the answer to that question anyway. And as I said, look at previously funded projects and that will give you ideas of how to, to approach it as well. Also look at the amount of money available in the program. Um, we have a case of this in the, at the moment in TRC. We wanted to apply for an infrastructure project which will cost about one and a half million dollars to fund. And when we had a look at the grant that was announced, there's only 13 million dollars available in the entire pot for the project, uh, for the fund. And obviously they're not going to give one project one and a half million dollars if there's only 13 million dollars available for the whole state to apply. So we had to reassess what we can apply for. Make sure that you answer the question. Now this might seem very obvious, but oftentimes when assessors look at your um, response, they don't actually see the information in there that they need. You might think that you are answering the question because you know your business really well and you know your project really well as well. But make sure that you are actually addressing the criteria that they are asking. And make sure also that you answer in the right place. If you um, find that you have more information that you need to, to put into a specific question, try not to put it into another question and, and say, as for the above or something like that. Don't assume that every assessor is reading every question in your application. Sometimes assessors get assigned one question or two questions in a, in a whole application process. And as part of the assessment process, they only read those two questions and give you a mark or a score on those two questions. So if you're answering your question in the wrong place or you're refer just saying, as for the above, that person might not get to have the information that they need for their assessment. Try to avoid jargon and acronyms. Every industry has them and every industry thinks that everyone knows what they're talking about. But when you're answering a question for a grant application, don't assume that the, the assessor will actually know your industry or know what you are talking about. So make sure that you address um, any of those things with full um, explanations. Also try and avoid subjective words. Things like, we've had a huge increase, this has been extremely popular, or obviously this is needed. Words like that don't really add any value to your application. And the next point is also that there might be word limits in your application when you are answering it. So if you're using words like obviously and huge and extremely um, without quantifying that data, that might not be to your advantage when you have to try and limit the words that you are trying to fit into the application form. Oftentimes when um, applications are having to be done online, I find it much easier to type them into the answers into a Word document first and then copy and paste it into an online application. Word has functions obviously where you can have a look at how many words you've typed into a specific range so you can highlight it and, and check how many words. So you will be able to track your word limits but it's also easier to find spelling mistakes and it's easier to share documents around if you want someone else to have a look at it. And the last point there is to get someone else to read before you submit. This is very important because as I said before, you know your business really well, you know your project really well, but when someone else reads it who, hasn't, who doesn't have that background information that you have, they might find that there are places where they don't quite understand what you mean and that might give you a really good um, uh, pre-check to make sure that you have actually addressed the questions. Now we'll look at some of the attachments. So have a look at the guidelines again and make sure what attachments are actually required and what attachments you can put into the application. 
Some applications don't actually allow you to attach any attachments. For example, if you've ever applied for the gambling, um, the gambling benefit fund, they don't allow you to do any attachments. So make sure that you check those guidelines. Sometimes you do need to attach some evidence for your claims. For example, letters from an accountant, surveys, statistics, photos, all those sorts of things um, might be required. Also make sure that you make use of the council resources that are available for you. If you look at trc.qld.gov.au, we actually have an economic profile that is available for you to have a look at for our region. I'm just going to stop here for a second and share that screen with you. And then you can have a look at um, how that looks and what you can actually use that for. So if you go to the Tablelands Regional Council website and you click on the business and industry link and you go to the economic profile, you will see there's a little um, paragraph here that talks about economy.id, that it is a statistical tool that draws on a variety of economic data resources to profile the characteristics of our local economy and how it compares to other areas how, and how it's changing. If you click through into that link, it will take you directly to the site, which shows you the economic profile of the Tablelands Regional Council. Now, I'm not sure if Cassowary has the same, but I, I believe um, that they might. So we'll just check on that and I'll, I'll um, answer that later. So this will give you information about the Tablelands Regional Council. The first page gives you um, our gross regional product, estimated at that. It gives you a snapshot of everything we have. The economic indicators along the side here will give you details on our population, our gross product, our employment, industry composition, employed residents, unemployment stats, et cetera, et cetera. For example, if you click into the unemployment stat there, that will bring up for you um, what our latest unemployment stats are. So at this stage, only 2019 December quarter is available and the unemployment rate for Tablelands was 4.9%. If you scroll down, it'll show you all the quarters across the last few years. So this goes back to 2010. Um, how our unemployment has tracked. You can also have a look at your own industry. For example, if you wanted to know how many people are employed in your industry in our area, you can click on employment by industry and that'll show you all the data for the different industries by ANZIC code. So that's the, um, the what does ANZIC stand for? The um, Standard Industry Classif Classification Codes for Australia and New Zealand. Um, and it'll show you how many people are employed in your industry. So you can click here on how, what the number is so that you sort them. You can also click into each of these sections and it'll bring up more detail in each of those sections. So I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. We do have, from time to time, we do have some um, workshops on how to work with this data. Um, and if you subscribe to the TRC website um, newsletters, you will see when we have another um, round of that coming up. So back to our presentation. As I said, Council has many resources that you can use. Um, I'm focusing on TRC obviously today, but Castlery Coast would have the same sort of resources for you. There is, for example, resources like community plans, economic development plans, cultural plans, events and strategy plans that will highlight to you what is important from a council and a regional point of view um, that you can also use in your applications and refer to. Before we go any further, I'm just going to do a quick poll now and see we two of you have actually um, applied for grants before. So I'm just going to launch that quickly. You should see that coming up on your screen. Right, so the results are coming in. Thank you for answering that. 
Um, and interestingly, it looks like we've got about half and half um, of people who have applied and who haven't. So that's interesting. There you go. You might be able to see those results now. Exactly half and half. There you go. So hopefully this information is valuable to both the people who have applied before and who haven't. Right, so here we go back into our presentation. So other attachments that might be important for you to think about are letters of support. Letters of support are letters that you can get from your community um, and for, from your customers, from um, staff members, from people that you want to attend an event, from others in your industry, etc., to strengthen your case for your application. They can be extremely important because they can actually demonstrate the need, as we talked about before. So if you manage to get letters of support from, for example, from the council, from others in your industry, um, from stakeholders in the project, they will show that this project really is needed in the, in the um, region and it's not just because you want to do it. What I would like to say about letters of support is to try and avoid cookie cutter letters. So it is sometimes easier to send out an email saying, you know, I would like a letter of support for, for my grant application. And here is what I would like you to say. And that makes it easier for the people to actually um, draft a letter and, and because obviously they don't, might not know all the information about the application. But if you get 10 letters of support back and they all look exactly the same, that might make it difficult to prove that there is actually a need and then that it's not just your friends that you've contacted to, to do the letter for you. So sometimes it's better to just send a couple of bullet points or dot points or um, a few paragraphs that people can add and change to make sure that you don't get that feeling that it's just you know been printed on a letterhead, that it, that it is actually a valid support letter. Also check how many um, letters you need to get or you should get and how many you can attach. Some grants um, from an online uh, application point of view might limit the number of attachments or the size of attachment that you can attach. So make sure that you read the guidelines from that point of view. And don't forget about council. We provide letters of support for a variety of projects. We do have a policy about how we go about assessing whether we should support a project or not. Um, and we have an online process for re requesting letters of support and I'm sure Castlery Coast has similar processes in place. It can be very important for you to show that you have support from your council as well. Um, and if you do get a letter of support, especially if it's for a capital project, that might not always be the same as getting a development approval or a building approval, but at least it shows that there is support from your local government for the project. So our policy um, for letters of support is available on our website. And just a quick note that for capital projects on council property, we do request that you give us at least 28 days notice for assessment before we give you that letter. And for any other letters, we do ask for at least 14 days. In saying that, we do know that things happen and that you might become aware of an application later on, um, which you might not um, have 14 days or 28 days. So we do try and work with the community as far as we possibly can. But it is always nice to have some um, notice so that we can, make a, we can do a, a proper letter of support for you. Right, we, the next part of our, our um, session will be to go into our case study. Now, as I said before, I might do the question and answer bit here before we go into the case study so that if anyone's not interested in applying for the Small Business Adaption Grant, they, they are welcome to leave at this point um, or after the Q&A session. So I'm just going to do a quick poll then and see who of you are actually thinking of applying for the Small Business Adaption Grant. So you should see that coming up on your screen. So are you thinking of applying for the Small, small Business COVID Adaption Grant, which opens on the 1st of July? So thank you for your responses there. 
Again, we have about half and half so far between yes and no, but also a few people who didn't know about it, which is great because then we can actually tell you about that and and hopefully um, you, you might be ready for that when it opens on the 1st of July. So there's your results. So about half and half between yes and no and a few who didn't know, which is great. So we're, we're glad to be able to tell you about that one. So as I said, I'm gonna go into the Q and A's now. We've had a couple of questions come in. Um, so the question that has come up is, I was just wondering where you find the information for previously funded grants. So if you are looking at applying for a grant that is in its second or third round, often in the actual um, application website or on the guidelines, there might be a link to show where previously funded grants have been. Um, also, you can look at um, the organisation that you are applying to. For example, if you are applying to the Department of Agriculture, you can do a search on their website and see funded grants and see what else has been funded. Um, or like I said, if it is, is a grant that is, has multiple rounds, there's normally a link somewhere along, along there that um, will give you the information of what grants they have funded under that specific grant previously. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, as I said before, please feel free to put any questions in there um, and we'll try and answer them again when we get to the end. Just had another question coming in, thank you very much. As a sole trader not employing anyone, I don't think I'm eligible for this grant. Is that correct? So are you, you're talking of the Small Business Adaption Grant. So if you look at the eligibility on that, which we will have a look at later on, um, I think you do need to employ staff and have fewer than 20 employees at the time of applying for the grant. So you might not be eligible for that one, but I would still encourage you to have a look um, and see, you know, read the, the guidelines and make sure because sometimes the guidelines do change from round to round. Um, for example, the job keeper initially was not, no one was eligible if you didn't have employees, but that did change over time. Um, and if there's, if you're not eligible for this grant, there are lots of different grants that are available at the moment. So maybe have a look and see if there's anything else that you might be eligible for. I've just had another question coming in. Thank you very much. Uh, the question is, is it appropriate to ask for feedback as to why you may not have been successful? Absolutely. Thank you very much for that question. That's a really important point. I try and ask for feedback on every grant that I'm not successful for. You might not always get it. Sometimes you just get generic questions uh, or generic answers, but it is absolutely appropriate to ask for feedback um, and actually very important to do so because you might have just missed a little something. Um, and if there is a future, future round of that specific grant, you might be able to address that something and that might make it, um, might help you to be successful in the next round. Even if you don't apply for that specific grant, again, if there isn't another round, um, it's always important to get feedback because it just helps you to, to hone your skills from that point of view and make sure that you, um, that you are even better the next time that you can apply for a grant. So thank you very much for that question. That's, that's a good one. Right. Thank you for that. So we might go into our case study now. And as I said, our case study is based on the Small Business Adaption Grant. So if you just Google Small Business Adaption Grant, that'll come up for you. I've just copied and pasted some of the details from the website so we can have a look at that. So when you read through the guidelines, one of the things that I that I focus on when I read it the first time is what the actual objective of the project of the program is. The objective of this program, according to the guidelines on the website, is to support small businesses subject to closure or highly impacted by the coronavirus shutdown restrictions announced by the Queensland Government to adapt and sustain their operation and build resilience. So there's a couple of things in there already. So they're talking about small businesses who have been impacted by the coronavirus. They're talking about adapting and sustaining operations and they're talking about resilience. So that already gives you an idea of what the government is trying to address through this program. So think about how what you might need will fill in with their objectives. 
The program aims to see small, small and micro businesses prepare for the safe resumption of trading, access digital technologies to rebuild business operations and transition to a new way of doing business, respond to online opportunities, sustain employment, maintain potential for longer term growth, upskill and reskill business owners and staff, embrace uh, business diversification to adapt and sustain operations and create or retain employment. So that's quite wide. And um, when we look at what the type of projects are that'll be funded, you'll see that it is quite wide as well. And this is really good from the government, obviously they're trying to, to help um, businesses recover and they're not being too restrictive in the way that they're doing it. Oftentimes, um, grant programs will not be this wide. They will have more narrow aims, but obviously in the current environment, um, the government is trying to do whatever they can to help small business, which is great. So then you have a look at the eligibility criteria. So this will answer some of the questions uh, or that one question that we got before. So to be eligible, you must have been subject to a closure or you were otherwise highly impacted by the shutdown restrictions announced from the 23rd of March. You must be able to demonstrate that you have experienced a minimum 30% decline in sales since 23rd of March over a minimum of one month period due to the onset and management of COVID-19. You must employ staff and have fewer than 20 employees at the time of applying for the grant. You must have an ABN, you must be registered for GSC, you must have a Queensland headquarters. Obviously, this is the Queensland government making this grant available, so that's important for them. You must have an annual turnover of $75,000 for the 18-19 or 19-20 or financial year, or you can provide financial records that show this will have been met for a recently started small business. So this is one of the criteria I think that has changed and that they have um, made more clear from the previous round. So um, as I said before, make sure that you are reading the most current um, guidelines that are available. When I had a look at this this morning, pardon me, when I had a look at this this morning, the guidelines have actually changed as recently as yesterday. Um, where they have clarified some of these requirements. So important for you to go and have a look and make sure that you read that again. You must also have a payroll of less than 1.3 million, not be insol insolvent or have owners or directors that are an uncharged bankrupt. Only one application per round will be accepted from an individual ABN or financial beneficiary or of a business. And successful applicants from round one of this program cannot apply for funding under round two. Now, important to note here that not everyone has received the outcome of their funding application under round one for this. So if you have applied and you haven't heard, we have spoken to the DESBIT, um, the Department of, of Employment and Small Business, which actually runs this program. And they have said to us that if you haven't heard your outcome by the 1st of July when this opens, you can apply again. Even if you are successful then under round one, they will just remove your application from round two. But in case you are not successful under round one, then at least you're in for another chance under round two. So that's important to know. This is another part of the grant that has changed since the previous um, application process. So it is much clearer now what actually will be funded under this round. Another small change is that the available grant amount now has a minimum of 2,000. Under the previous round, it was just a maximum of 10,000, no minimum, but there is now a minimum of 2,000 per eligible small or micro business. In recognition of the significant impacts of COVID-19, the funding can be used to the following. So there's a whole list of things that can be funded. Financial, legal and professional advice, um, and I want to pay special attention to bullet point two. So this has been clarified and expanded from the previous round as well. Um, in the previous round, they just said you can use it to meet business costs. Now they're saying it can be business operational costs that can be funded, including utilities, council rates, rent, telco charges, insurance, fees, licensings, or franchise fees. So that again is quite wide and that means that just about every business should be able to find some of their costs that they can actually apply for. Now, as we mentioned before, it is important for you to get quotes 
to or substantiating information to show what you will spend the money on. For example, if you want to apply for funding to cover your rent, um, within that the, the criteria obviously of two thousand to ten thousand dollars, it's important that you attach information that shows what your rent is. We've had feedback from desks that they would rather have a full copy of your lease to be attached as your um, substantiating information rather than just your rent slips so that they can double check and see what actually your rent requirement is and how much it will be going forward. So with all of these applications, whatever you are applying for, make sure that you attach as much information as you can and as much as it is actually available, for the space that is available for you to apply um, in, the, in the online form. You can also, as I said, um, apply for strategic planning, counselling, business coaching, marketing and communication activities, digital technology strategy development, training, upskilling of, of employees to adapt to new business models, which is fantastic. All of us have had to rethink about how we do our business and what we spend our time on and how we can actually attract our customers and get to our customers. So that sort of, um, that sort of funding is really valuable. There is a note also at the bottom saying that grant funds can be used toward any of the above activities that have occurred from March 23rd onwards, keeping in mind that the project must be completed within a maximum of six months from the date of approval. So that's really important to note as well, that you can actually use the funding for any, any of those activities that have occurred from the 23rd of March onwards. Now, I've got a couple of questions coming in, so I might just have, go on to that really quickly and see if there's anything that I can answer as we go along. Um, so we've had a question about resilience. Does this then lead to emergency events as well, like fire, cyclone, farm customers going into quarantine, etc., preparing for future post-COVID-19? That's an interesting question, and that might be something that um, you might want to actually contact the funding body about. When I read that, I think it's more about resilience of the actual business um, rather than emergency events like fire and cyclone, etc. But that's just my interpretation. So I would suggest that that's a good one to actually um, go to the funding body and, and make sure whether, if, if you're thinking about a project that might have some of those elements, I would think that that, will, um, that would be good. Um, second question, do you think a letter of support will help for this grant? And where do I ask for a letter of support? I think any information that you can provide um, is good. Um, because this grant is a really quick open and shut, um, and that's something we haven't got to yet, but the, how the assessment process will work, um, I think you, you would be better to actually spend your time working on the other um, substantiating information. Um, but if you do have, um, a, a, for example, there's a, a body that looks after your industry, for example, if you're in tourism, there's a tourism funding body, uh, or not a funding body, sorry, sorry a, an overseeing body that looks after your industry, and they would be willing to give you a support to say how, you know, how their industry has been affected and to support you in your application, then I think that's great. Uh, if you have customers or um, other people who are involved in your industry that you might think it might be good to hear from them and, and show the need for your project. I think any, le any letter of support that you are able to get um, would, be, would be useful. Um, but from this point of view, this grant doesn't actually require them. So it just depends on where is the best for you to spend your time. I hope that answers the question. Um, uh, I'll do another couple of questions and then I go on. Um, do you think more grants will be announced this year for small business? Yes, absolutely. Um, we do get grants announced for small business all the time anyway, but I think with a focus on employment and on the recovery from, from the COVID um, pandemic, I definitely think there will be more small business grants. What they will look like, I don't know. Of course, we've got a, an election coming up from the Queensland government later on this year as well, which might affect what types of grants and when they are available. So um, it's important to, to just keep an eye out and look at those previous, um, those previous websites and, and areas where I, I mentioned before where you can get information about grants so you are on the forefoot. 
I'll leave that there for now and just keep going and then do more questions and answers at the end. Right, so we've looked at what will be funded. Now, important to have a look at the assessment process, as I said before. In addition to meeting the eligibility criteria, applications will be assessed against the following. Funding availability. So this is very, very important to note. Applications will be processed on a first come, first serve basis, and therefore not all applications will be successful. As we started out this presentation, this, the first round of this grant was heavily oversubscribed and the government um, department is actually still working their way through the applications that have been put in. So it's very important that you get yourself ready and thankfully for this round, they have actually given us some advance notice of when this grant will open. So work towards getting yourself ready and being able to submit your application very soon after the opening date. So it opens on the 1st of July. And I can bet you that there will be many people who will be submitting their applications on the 1st of July already. So prepare yourself for scenarios like um, the technology might not be available, that this website will be very busy, it will take time to upload. So make sure you are as ready as you possibly can be if you want to apply. The second point is that the submission of a complete form with all the requested supporting information will be assessed. So if there are areas in your application that are not, that you haven't completed or you haven't attached all of the supporting information, you will probably get, um, uh, your eligibility will be assessed that you're not eligible and your application will automatically be declined. Um, we have been told in the first round that the department was being very, very kind and they did try and phone businesses and email them to ask for more information. But due to the absolute demand for this process, they will not have the capacity to do that under this round. So make sure that you put your absolute best foot forward, you complete the, the whole application form with all of the requesting, uh, requested supporting documentation. The third point there is that they will assess value for money as determined by the Queensland government. This is a point that you will find in all um, applications from any government organisation. Because it is public money that is being used for the grant funding, they have to have a process where they look at what the value for money is for the government and for the public money that they have um, that they have at their disposal. So it's important that you, as I said before, that you have a look at how your application actually meets their criteria because that is how they will judge whether it's value for money for them. If it doesn't meet their criteria of what they are trying to achieve through this um, application process, um, that will make it more difficult, obviously, for them to approve the application. Important here to note as well is that the requesting supporting information, uh, requested supporting information needs to be in there. Some of the feedback that we've had from previous applicants was, and also from the department, was that it was difficult to, to get quotes for some of the projects that they wanted to do. And again, that's why it's great that we have a little bit more notice this time. So make sure that you get your quotes for the application that you want to uh, launch. Um, sometimes it will take other businesses a few days to just get a quote together for you so that you can use that as your substantiating information. And also make sure that you get onto your accountant so that you can get a letter from them or get some information from them to prove that you meet that eligibility criteria of the reduction in, um, in your trade. Have a look also on the website. Um, there was a document that was entitled Frequently Asked Questions. Um, in, in addition to the guidelines, it showed there what other things your application should include. So it says here, and I must admit I didn't update this part this morning, but this was in the, in the um, frequent, frequently asked questions when I downloaded this a week or so ago. It showed um, that your application must include a statement describing how the funding will contribute to your small business during the COVID crisis. Evidence to demonstrate that your business revenue has experienced a minimum of 30% decline. So that's the one I said before. So get onto your accountant or have a look at what information you might be able to provide to show that that is the case. 
invoice and or receipt of purchase if the if it's related to a purchase of specialized digital equipment or business specific software etc on or after 23rd of march or if it's something that you haven't purchased yet then obviously you need to have a quote you, um, in the frequently asked questions it also asks that you um, put in a declaration of your employee headcount evidence of your annual turnover and evidence of your annual payroll so again make sure when you're answering when, when you're having a look at this grant if you're interested in, in applying that those are still the requirements that you need and that they haven't been updated also have a look at what is going to be required for you to do an acquittal. So the acquittal is the final report that you submit on your grant where you show that you have actually done the project that you said you were gonna do, that you used the funding the way that you said you were gonna use it, and that you have achieved the outcomes that you wanted to achieve. In the frequently asked questions, and um, for this grant, it said that applicants will have six months to complete their projects after receiving their approval, and they must acquit the total amount of funding received within one month of the completion. Applicants must complete and submit an acquittal report through the Smarter Grants, which is the online portal, and submit copies of the invoices and proof of purchase for the total project cost. The acquittal form is a simple online document providing information on the success and outcomes of the project to date, the activities undertaken, and the learnings. Businesses will be surveyed six months after the completion of the program. So before you apply for any grant, it's very important that you have a look at what you will actually need to produce for your acquittal. And most of the time that is addressed in the guidelines. If you are going to have to, for example, if you do an event and you need to be able to provide confirmation of how many people attended your event, you will need to keep those records um, and it's good to know that up front. You don't want to get to a situation where the event is passed or your project is done and you haven't kept the records that you need to for the acquittal purposes. All right. Right, so that is all I have for you this morning, but the questions have been coming in thick and fast, so I'm going to try and address those for you now. So the question has come in, as a small business who's only been in business for six months and looking to employ two people as soon as possible, including the business owner, is it worth progressing um, employment pre-1 July and apply for the Small Business Adaption Grant, or is there another round to come? That's a good question. Um, as I mentioned before, we have an election coming up um, later on this year for Queensland Government. And because this is a Queensland Government program, we don't know whether there will be more rounds. There might be, um, but there might also not be. It depends on what the government wants to achieve going forward and what they're gonna spend their energy on as part of the COVID recovery and also as part of um, the, what they want to achieve pre-election. So, I would have a look at the at the guidelines clearly, um, so and and look at whether there are any eligibility criteria that say how long you have to be in business for, um, and how many people you have to employ already now before you can launch an application. Um, and if you meet those eligibility eligibility criteria, I would certainly apply. I wouldn't wait for further grants uh, or further rounds. If you meet the eligibility criteria and you can get all the information together, I would apply under this round because there just isn't a guarantee of whether this, there would be another round. So I hope that answers the question. Another question coming in, does council have any support for small businesses at the moment that we can apply for? As council, we don't have any grant programs that we can apply for, um, that small businesses can apply for at the moment. However, we do send out our uh, Business Matters newsletter very regularly where we show all of the grants that are available in the region. There have also been um, some concessions obviously made from council with what we can um, uh, in terms of rate relief and et cetera and fee relief, things like that. Um, which is available also on our website if you have a look at that. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of things, for example, these webinars and things to make sure that people are aware of what support is available for them at the moment. Next question, regarding quotes for an application, are you required to use the company that you obtain the quote from? For example, if you get a quote for a website design from company A, do you have to use them or can you use company B? 
Um, that is an interesting question. I haven't seen anything in the guidelines that actually say whether you have to use the company that you got the quote from. Sometimes you do. For example, if you apply for uh, the Gambling Community Benefit Fund, you are required to actually put in the quotes at the beginning with the names of the, the companies. And if you change, that is actually considered as a variation. So, but for this grant funding round, I haven't seen anything that specifically says, says that. Um, if you are planning on doing something like that, or if something like that happens, it might just be good to give a quick call to the um, to the government to just make sure whether that would be good going forward. And obviously that makes sense from the point of view that you might not be able to get quotes from a lot of companies before you actually launch your application. Um, I would say that as long as you are still delivering what you said you were going to deliver, uh, that should be okay, but it's important to check with your grant funding body whenever you make any changes. So have a good look at the criteria. I haven't seen anything like that, um, but that might be a, a question for the government. Uh, can we apply for multiple activities, operating costs and website development? I believe so. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one though, so I might ask if one of my panellists have any information on that. Um, Christy, Callum, Kira, have you guys got any information on that? It's Christy here. Uh, so, so my understanding is that you can apply for anything up to 10,000. It's just more about explaining why. Great, thank you, that's great. There you go, thank you, I hope that answers your question. If you were about to open a business and COVID stopped you, can you apply for this grant? I don't think so, unfortunately, because there is under the eligibility criteria that you have um, an annual turnover of 75,000 or that you can show that you would have met that if you had recently started. So um, I don't think that you might be eligible for this one. Um, if you believe that you have any information that would show that you would have met that, I would give the government a call again or an email and just double check that with them. But from my reading of the eligibility criteria, that doesn't look like it's the case. Next question, if you apply for the full 10,000, will they partially fund? Should I reduce the amount asked for to increase my chance? Um, look, I think that is one strategy that you can, you can employ. Um, obviously, there is a limited funding pool, so um, it might be a good thing for you to assess what the actual need is for your business. If you determine that you really do need the full $10,000, then that is what you should be applying for. If you believe that um, you would rather have a definite 2,000 than no chance at a 10,000, then that might be the strategy to go for. Because it is a first come first serve basis, um, they will obviously only fund up to the amount that they have available. So that's up to you to decide what strategy you want to employ there and look at what, what the actual need is for your business. So that's the best I can do with that answer. Um, the next question, what is the capital cost referred to relating to this grant? So, <clears throat> capital cost, so the question that you were asking here, the, um, in the section of what can be funded, says capital costs associated with meeting COVID-19 safety requirements. This can refer to a number of things. For example, if you've had to put up screens around your tills in your business, or if you've had to make any adjustments to how people come into your business, you might have had to change, I don't know, your, your door to an automatic open or something like that. Anything that is actual, it's not an operating cost, it is a change to uh, equipment or to um, the physical structure of your building or your business, that will be capital costs. So that's what that is referring to. I hope that answers that question. 
The next question is, what is Smarty Grants? Good question. Smarty Grants is the name of a system. Um, it's an online portal, which many of the government departments now use for their application. So it's just a portal. Um, there will be a link on the, on the website, which um, automatically launches you into that website. You won't actually see anything to do with Smarty Grants itself. Um, it will look like it's the government's portal, but that's just a system that many governments and other organisations are using now to administer grants in an online environment. Next question, do the assessors give preference to applications based on the purpose of the funding? Meaning, would we stand a better chance applying for business operational costs rather than a capital item? I don't believe so. I believe um, because in this instance, because it is a first come, first serve, and as long as you meet the eligibility criteria and you are um, one of the applications that came into the round in that, in that round, I believe that you will get funding. I don't believe that there is a preference based on which of the items you fall under. And I think they have deliberately kept it very broad um, so that they can fund businesses for a broad range of things rather than making it about a specific item. As I mentioned during the process, um, if you are applying for other grants, there might be um, preferences in there of what they prefer to, um, to apply for. For example, I'll use the Gambling um, Benefit Fund again as an example. They actually, in their criteria, they have a list of what they prefer to fund. So the first thing is capital, then they might fund um, workshops, then they might fund events. But for this grant, I don't believe that there is a preference. Next question. Is grant funding a simple addition to tax return or BAS? Assuming it's tax-free income, does it matter if the project goes over two financial years? From the grant funding point of view, it won't matter if it goes over two financial years because you will have your um, you will have six months to complete the project. In the question of whether this is tax-free income, I would defer to your accountant on that basis. Um, I am not um, in a position to answer any of those questions. I'm sorry, um, that is for your accountant to answer. Thank you. Um, Another question, exactly what time will the grant open? For example, 12.01 a.m. on the 1st of the 7th or 9th? Um, I don't think they have answered that question. They just say the 1st of July. So I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I would guess that they would open it in business time, but I, I, yeah, I can't answer that. You'll just have to have a look, I'm, I'm sorry, on the 1st of July and keep refreshing the browser until it's open. Um, second to last question at the moment is, will this slideshow or meeting be available for perusal later? Yes, it will be. We have recorded this session, so it will be available for you to have a look at later and we will send you a link to that as soon as we have put it up on our website. Last question for now, unless there's any more coming in. Um, in addition to the guidelines, frequently asked information and tips, is there an example of this application form available to assist pre-1 July? You will just have to have a look at the website at as to when they actually make the application form available. Often with grants, they only make the final guidelines and the final application form available on the day that you actually apply. So that doesn't help you from that point of view. But if you read the guidelines that they have put up there um, and make sure that you keep reading those, um, that's the best that you can do at this stage is just to make sure that you read it and make sure that you have all the information available. And then it should be fairly simple to just um, type the answers into the application form. So hopefully that helps you on that. Thank you very much. I'm gonna leave that there for the next couple of minutes. If there are any other questions, you're most welcome to type them in there. If you have any other questions um, with relation to the um, RSIS project, that's the Regional Skills Investment Strategy Project, um, or if you have any questions about um, what TRC are doing to help 
um, the skills investment and Cassowary Coast as well. Please see the contact details on your screen right now. So Christy Whitehead from Tablelands, that's her details. And Kira Jean Clark from Cassowary Coast, her details as well. If you have any other questions about what um, is available in terms of economic recovery, we have, the Tablelands Regional Council has formed an economic recovery group as part of our disaster um, response and we are taking information from businesses as to how they have been affected. Many of you might have been called by the TRC over the last few months as well. We try to phone as many businesses as we can to try and offer support and a listening ear at least. Um, in the beginning it was very difficult to offer any support throughout the COVID response but um, we are trying to make as much information available as we possibly can so please reach out to us if um, you think that we can help you in any other way as well um, last question that's just come in is there any way of looking at the application form now to be ready on july one no i don't think so unfortunately as i mentioned before i think the application form will only be available when it is actually open for application but i would suggest that you keep looking at the website the small business adaption grant website they might put up a copy of that before it actually opens but if you do read the guidelines and you make sure that you have all of the information available then it should be simple enough for you to answer that when it actually does open up on the first of july hopefully that answers And that is all we have for you today. Thank you very much for joining us. As I said, we will make this um, recording available for anyone who wants to have a look at it again or pick up on some of those tips and tricks. Or if, if you know of anyone who wasn't able to make it today, we would appreciate it if you would pass that on. Thank you very much.